here we have a mass spring system where the mass is connected to the spring, which is connected to a fixed point. The question is if the mass is released from rest when the spring is stretched by alpha units, calculate the time response of the mass displacement that are going to call here y of t. There are two key points in this question. The first one is that the mass is released from rest. And that's important because with that we have the initial speed of the mass. If the mass is released from rest, the initial speed is zero. We can thus write that y dot at time equals to zero equals to zero. Another important information that we have is that the mass is released when uh, the spring is stretched by alpha units. So the initial compression or the initial stretch of that spring is alpha at time equals to zero. When the mass is released, the spring is stretched. We can now write that the initial displacement of the spring, y at time t equals to zero, equals to alpha. To solve this problem now, we need a free body diagram for mass m, and this one is relatively simple. We simply have the mass that is moving, and we have y of t as the position of the mass. The only force acting on the mass is the spring force. If the spring is stretched when the mass is released, then the spring applies a force to the left, and the magnitude of that force is the stiffness of the spring times the displacement y. That is the only force acting on the spring, so if you do the sum of all forces, we have negative ky, negative because according to our convention, this is going to the left, forces pointing to the left are negative, and this equals to the mass itself, times the acceleration, that is y double dot. If you rearrange this equation, we have m y double dot plus k y equals to zero. And this is the equation of motion of the mass. If you're interested in solving for y of t, we now have to deal with the second order differential equation and solve it. The way you're going to solve it here is through Laplace transform. Don't forget that this equation now is subjected to these two initial conditions. The equation we have is my double dot plus ky equals to zero. So here we are in time domain. We are going to move this to the frequency domain and then back to the time domain with an inverse Laplace transform. If you take the Laplace transform of this equation, let's start with the first term here, m y double dot. m is a constant, the Laplace transform of a constant is the constant itself. Now m multiplies y double dot. The Laplace transform of the second derivative is s squared times y of s, which is the same representation of the second derivative, but here you have y of s times s would be the first derivative times s squared, that is the second derivative of y of s. We are taking the second derivative of y of s, y of s is subjected to those initial conditions. If you look at the table of Laplace transform, for the second derivative, we have two terms that I have to add here. The first one is negative s y at zero, s times the initial position, and minus y dot at zero. Plus the other term, k is a constant, y of t becomes y of s, equals to zero. This is now the same equation in the frequency domain with the initial conditions that we set in the beginning. 
Let's look at the initial conditions here. We have two. The first one is y at zero. That's alpha. The second one is y dot at zero. That is the initial speed of the mass, and that is zero. We can now rearrange this equation as m s squared y of s minus m alpha s, right? I, y of 0 is alpha multiplied by m. This term is 0 plus k y of s. And this is all equal to 0. We have two terms with having y of s. We can factor y of s out. We have y of s. We multiply ms squared plus k. And this is going to be equal to, if you move m alpha s to the other side, we have m alpha s positive. We're solving for y of s, so let's create an expression for it. That is y of s equals to m alpha times s divided by m s squared plus k. We are now almost done. We have an expression here that is a function of s, and you need to take now the inverse Laplace transform to find y of t. If you look at a Laplace tables of Laplace transform, you see that s is always multiplied by 1. This m needs to go. So to get rid of that m, we can divide the top and the bottom of the equation by m, basically multiplying it by 1 times m divided by m. If you divide the numerator by m, divide this by m, that m cancels. And if you divide the denominator by m, this becomes s squared plus k over m. Now we are in a format that uh, can be found in a, in a table of Laplace transform. Looking at a table, we'll see that the Laplace transform of s divided by s squared plus b equals to cosine of b times t. And this is exactly the form we have. We have a constant for, that, for the Laplace transform, for the table of Laplace transform. That doesn't matter. Our b is k, or this should have been b squared. So s divided by s squared plus b squared this is cosine of bt. Our b squared here is k over m. So b equals to square root of k over m. Now we can write y of t as alpha times this whole thing becomes cosine of b which is the square root of k over m times t. And here we have the time response of that mass when it's subjected to the initial displacement and let go from rest. This makes sense. If we look again at the diagram, we have no element that is dissipating energy. When the spring is stretched, we have a potential energy stored in the spring. And as we let the mass go, the potential energy is transferred to the mass in the form of kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy eventually goes back to the spring. And that goes back and forth and oscillates following a cosine function. That makes perfect sense. There is nothing dissipating energy in this system. Another interesting observation that we could make here is to look at the poles of this equation. The poles are the values of s that will make the denominator zero. 
In this case, that would be S equals to the square root of negative K over M. And as you see here, we have the square root of a negative number. So all the poles are imaginary. All the poles will lie on the imaginary axis. If you now think back about the uh, think back on the Laplace transform definition, all poles are imaginary. The solution to this signal is only sinusoidal. There is no exponential form, and that's what we see here. There is nothing dissipating energy. The signal that it creates this transformation here is purely uh, a sinusoidal waveform, which agrees with what we found in with the intuition when you leave, when you look at the mass spring system.